Hi everyone, welcome to Casual Watch Reviews. We've got another launch day here from Christopher Ward, an exciting release, the first launch I've done of uh, 2024, and I'm kindly joined by Jorg from Christopher Ward. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Hello. Well, Jorg, the first time you've been on the channel, for people that don't know you, do you mind giving a quick intro and a little bit of a background to yourself? So yeah, Jorg Bader, been with the company, I think, 10 years, more or less, head of product, where everything which is touching product, so especially new product development, is my field. Um, I see myself more as a, in football terms, as a number 10, or in uh, football, or in American football terms, as a, as a quarterback, so just making sure everybody's coming together. The interlink between design, so William Brackfield, which was, I think, which was on the show, with Raiden Bookman, Frank Stelzer, product management team, the technical team, and I'm just trying to bring everybody together and make sure we're walking in the right direction and um, let these guys really do their amazing work because at the moment, I think we have a great team. Everybody works so good together as well. We function really good. And this is just, I think, my main aim to continue um, this kind of crystal ball spirit, I think, which sharpened over the last few months and years, especially to keep going and um, yeah, to keep everybody excited. What an interesting last couple of years, real evolution for Christopher Ward with the release of the Balcanto, the 12, and also the, the Sealander as well, which I think was quite a milestone. Agreed. The Sealander was actually for, for us also in terms of thinking, I think, where it's this was actually the point where we could really sharp what we want to do. What are our collections? How is the building of these collections? What is the quality aspect of Christoph Ward? What is the pricing? And Sealander was um, really, I think, the starting point for all of that. Funnily enough, that um, two years before the Sealander, so actually when we started with the Sealander development, we were already thinking about the integrated. But yeah. So you see how sometimes uh, things are changing. But yeah, this was really the starting point, I think, to get that really weird idea of what is a Christopher Ward and why should it be outstanding. And this is what we're talking about today is the new Sealander GMT. I had hands on with the watch. You kindly sent me one pre-release. It's the launch day is today. One of my favorite watches that I reviewed last year was the 39mm Sealander GMT with the Dragonfly dial. The new watch for this year is... That watch, but in a smaller 36, mirroring the Sealander Automatic that you did. What was the thinking behind making the GMT smaller? Was it that the Sealander 36 was selling quite well? The smaller size in general, I think, is, is something we always um, put something in. We always put it in, in actually in the center of our thinking because we we when you look back, Trident was 42, 44, really way back. And suddenly, as we are saying also, we want to be the people's watch brand. We also want to be here for smaller sizes. And obviously, as you're saying, it's also the background is also because of sales and the reasons why we're doing it. Really, the GMT is one of our best selling models. And I think we almost forgot that we have such a strong card on the drawer sleeve. So um, it was really time that we bring the 36 into it, the GMT because it's such a popular model. Everybody loves it. And I think there is not so many great GMT watches out there at the smaller size. So yeah, it was really time. That was one of the things that I was quite interested in the last time I interviewed Mike. I didn't realize the GMT, the Sealander GMT, the 39 is one of the biggest selling in the US, is it? Or, or at that time, it certainly was. Still, still. Still, especially the white, the US leans a bit more into white than I would say compared to Europe. But still, it's uh, really our strongest seller. I had hands on with the watch and it, it really is, you really have just shrunk the whole proportion down of the watch. It's a 36 millimeter case with a lug to lug of 43 and a height of 11.3 because it's using the same movement as the 39. But it must be more complex than just shrinking it all down them or is it that easy can you just shrink the proportions of the watch down or does it did was there other engineering challenges by doing that that you had to shrinking in the first place when you when you hear it you think it's it's really easy but actually shrinking is is not so easy because what i hear a lot from from will and adrian is all about the proportions 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 i hear this all the time but they're actually right because yeah when you you know the index length the logo type uh, and then also, do you want to include a date? Do you want to exclude a date? What you do? First, maybe there's, there's all like, yeah, you say you shrink down, but actually when you come into the detail, it's not really shrinking down. And, and sometimes I believe it, it's almost harder 
because you have to take decisions which are not really clear. You know, when you would design a little watch, it's straightforward. I don't know, you make an accent color in orange, for example. You go, okay, we can do that. That's that's straightforward. But when it comes to the, the index, for example, uh, zero to mil, long or wide or whatever, it gets a bit complicated and you can lose yourself. So it's nuts to underestimate actually sh shrinking down. And you've kept the bracelet look width as 20 mil. Pretty impressed that it didn't make it look like the watch was out of proportion. But I'm interested to know, because typically a 36, you'd imagine more like an 18 mil look width. Was it important to make sure that it, so it was interchangeable with the other straps? I think also that it has still remains that physical presence. I think maybe a 19 would be also an ideal width. But I think the 20 gives it really that, that strong also. I think what Sealander stands for, that ruggedness, you can do everything with it. And if it would have been 18, I think it would almost go really into the elegant corner. And this is something really we, we didn't want to do. So I'm quite happy, actually. Um, first, I was really for third for 19, but then we kept the 20 also because, as you also been saying cor um, correctly, because of the interchangeability of straps so also i mean when you have existing customers or new customers if you have a, a strap from us you can directly plug and play because at the moment we we don't really have 18 millimeter straps in our or, or brakes 20 mil is probably offers the biggest choice in terms of straps both from from you guys and, and aftermarket i think this is another important point that you mentioned this is a properly rugged even though the the size is slightly smaller it is it's still got all of the specs that the other sealander has it's got the 150 meter water resistance the caller gmt function on there as well it's using the same movement and it feels solid as well even though it is a 36 instead of 39 i think because of the the height of it at 11 just over 11 millimeters it still has quite a quite a wrist presence it's a little bit smaller than what i like because i think 39 is is the best size for me but i think definitely if you've got like smaller wrists certainly a great unisex size so you're still getting that that ruggedness of the sealander watch but yeah in a smaller smaller size fully agree i mean for example, also today I'm wearing my 39 Sealander and I have a small wrist. And for me, it's limit. Today, um, honestly, yeah, in general, I mean, it's, it's a progress, obviously. You do that journey, you maybe stop big, you go small, whatever. Yeah, and it's always the journey, right? So, but today I would really prefer to buy um, 36 rather than something bigger. Also on the 12, I have a 1240. If I could choose again, I would probably go today for the 36. But yeah, I mean, that's all personal choices. So yeah, yeah. keep that aside. Well, well I'm fighting the, fighting the system. I've got the 42 Elite <laughs> 1000 on. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm wearing the biggest watch in the collection at the moment. <laughs> But I didn't want to say anything, but yeah. The the release colours are the black, white, and the dragonfly dial, the blue. Why did you pick the dragonfly blue as being one of the three launch colours? Dragonfly, maybe also the background, the, the dragonfly was born that exact colour shade um, back in the day when the whole Tiffany was really hot. And we didn't want to create another Tiffany, Tiffany. But we, we felt that the color direction is cool, but it, obviously it's too Tiffany, as you call it. We wanted to have something darker, and what I really like with the Dragonfly is really that versatility. When you go into a dark room, it's not loud. Maybe, but it's loud when you when the sunlight directly hits it. Obviously, with the sun ray effect, it can be loud, but it's a bit of both. And this is something I think we re really want to achieve, and also in, in, in future color palettes, um, com compared, for example, to a 12, it's very important, I think, that maybe a Sealander is something a bit more calmer, not that loud and not that sparky where you see uh, on the 12, we use this light blue, light greens and all of that. So um, also something we're really working on at the moment um, to distinguish really also color palettes for, for the different watches because they have a different function at end of life, actually on the wrist so this is something we're, we're really um, trying to attention at the moment a thing i forgot to mention about the uh the bracelet as well i received it on the consort bracelet but it will also fit the other bracelet as well so you've got that oyster beta bracelet we call it beta yeah the um so you've got that offers two looks to it doesn't it really you've got the i would say the the um the other bracelet is a lot more it would bulk it out a little visually bulk it out a little bit more so the same bracelet as you was where the co the consort is a lot thinner isn't it more refined got that butterfly clasp so that would give it a more refined maybe dressier look as well so you've got two choices really in the same 
in the same way. Absolutely. And this is what, what we want to do. I mean, in general, like, yes, you have, you have, you have your one main aesthetic, but like, either you like this more or you prefer the other one. But especially, I think if you have um, a smaller wrist side, I think the concert bracelet is definitely better suited to your wrist. And actually, because as already the, the diver clasp um, from the, his natural being is just quite solid. So I would always go for for a consort if I would have a, a really smaller wrist. Yeah, I, I, I like the I like the consort bracelet. So before we finish up here, definitely we should go over the pricing on the Aquaflex strap, which is your rubber strap. It's coming in at nine hundred and five pounds, then one thousand and twenty on the Beta bracelet, and then one thousand and sixty on the consort bracelet. The watch is now live on Christopher Ward's site. There's a link in the description down below. York, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Casual Watch Reviews. Thanks, everyone. Bye.